Hello my bodybuilding and fitness family. Today we're going to be talking about creatine. Uh, I get a lot of questions about creatine just from people at the gym, uh, people coming up to me, you know, questions on YouTube. Uh, how much should I take? Should you even take creatine? Uh, what's the best kind of creatine? And uh, how does it work? Uh, in this video I'm going to be going over in detail how creatine works, uh, what kind of creatine you should take, how much you should take, when you should take it, and if you should take it. So to start, what even is creatine? This is creatine. Uh, we've got the molecular formula written down right here and the structural formula written down over here. C4, H9, N3, and O2. Basically, it just has four carbons, nine hydrogens, three nitrogens, and two oxygens, and this is how it would look uh, this is just how it looks structurally. This is creatine, and this is creatine. So, let's start off with, should you take creatine? Yes. Yes, you should take creatine for sure, if you can afford it. If you can afford it. If you can't afford creatine, don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. Well, I mean, it kind of is, so you might want to buy it, but don't spend money you don't have on it. Uh, what's the best kind of creatine to take? The best kind of creatine to take is creatine monohydrate. I'll explain why uh, later in the video when I'm going over how creatine works. Um, how much should you take? You should take five grams of creatine a day. You don't need to load. Uh, the loading thing, it just helps get your uh, muscle saturation levels filled quicker, but it makes you run out of it quicker too, which means you have to go buy more, which also means the supplement company makes more money. So that's really there just so they make more money and you use creatine quicker. Is creatine safe? Yes, creatine is 100% safe when used correctly. If you're a dumbass and you take 30 grams of creatine a day, well then you get what's coming to you. You might have some kidney problems. Uh, the only time I would say don't take creatine or be hesitant about taking creatine is if you have a pre-existing kidney or liver problem. Uh, a lot of people say that creatine is hard on your kidneys when really it isn't. Uh, if you have a normal functioning body and uh, you don't have any pre-existing medical conditions with your kidneys or liver, you'll be fine. Uh, there, there will be no problems at all. Uh, if you do have some kind of kidney or liver disease or problems, I would speak to your doctor before starting creatine and uh, ask him first. I'm not a medical expert, so I can't tell you to take it if you have those problems. If you do take it and you don't ask your doctor, that's, that's up to you. And finally, what does creatine even do? Well, creatine increases endurance, it increases your strength, and it increases your recovery weight. Alright, so how does creatine work? Here's how. I'm sure you'll appreciate my uh, muscle drawing right here. Basically, your muscle's short-term energy source is called adenosine triphosphate. And whenever your muscle contracts, you use so much adenosine triphosphate. I don't really know how much you use per contraction. I'm sure it varies but you uh, use an adenosine triphosphate and it becomes adenosine diphosphate. You lose one phosphate group off of, uh, the, off of the adenosine triphosphate. And then the adenosine diphosphate will get turned back into an adenosine triphosphate whenever your muscle uh, phosphocreatine goes through a reverse reaction with uh, creatine kinase. Uh, your body stores phosphocreatine in your muscles and the uh, amount of phosphocreatine in your muscles changes person to person. Uh, most people's levels are different naturally but uh, the phosphocreatine in your muscles goes through, a goes through a reverse reaction with creatine kinase which takes the phosphate off of this phosphocreatine and adds it back to the adenosine triphosphate which is then turned into another ATP. So let's go over this again. Your muscle contracts and ATP turns to ADP. Phosphocreatine 
goes through a reverse reaction with creatine kinase, and a phosphate is added to ADP and makes it ATP. And where creatine helps in this is creatine increases your muscle uh, phosphocreatine levels. And like I said, uh, think of your creatine levels as a gas tank. Some people have naturally bigger or more full gas tanks than other people do. So some people get more effect out of creatine and some people get less effect out of creatine. But basically, that's how it works. Your muscles contract and ATP turns into ADP, which then gets a phosphate added to it to turn back into ATP. There's also another process your body can make ATP through uh, by using glucose, but that's complicated and unimportant right now. It doesn't relate to this video. The higher your muscle phosphocreatine levels, the quicker you can replenish your ATP stores, which means you'll recover quicker, you'll have greater strength gains and greater endurance in the gym. Okay, so now let's get into the reason why you should take creatine monohydrate over any other creatine. I'm sure you've all heard creatine advertised as you won't retain water or you won't bloat with it. Well, first of all, that's bullshit. They're ripping you off of the most anabolic part about creatine. The most anabolic thing about creatine is that it does make you retain water because a hydrated cell is an anabolic cell. So when they're selling you creatine that doesn't make your uh, cells hold water, they're selling you creatine that basically doesn't work. You're paying more for less effect, basically. Uh, but see, they, they advertise it as bloat. You won't bloat with the creatine. Well, first of all, all the water your uh, creatine will make you hold is intramuscular. It's not underneath your skin. It's not going to make you look less defined or bloated. The only time you could possibly look bloated from creatine is if you did a loading phase and were taking 30 or upwards grams of creatine a day and uh, it just couldn't hold in your muscles but you, you won't bloat with creatine and creatine monohydrate is like I said the most tested proven creatine there are there's pH buffered creatine creatine ethyl ester they all suck and they're a lot more expensive than creatine monohydrate uh, I'll put a link to one of Dr. Lang Norton's videos about supplements in which he goes over creatine and why you should use monohydrate over the other ones. Uh, Lane Norton has got a PhD in uh, nutritional sciences and a bachelor's in biochemistry. He knows his shit. So if you don't believe me or if you want more information on why monohydrate is better, you can go watch his video. I'll put it right here. Uh, anyway, guys, that's why you should take creatine.